a map without names? For most people, it would be a map where it would be very difficult to identify the territory. Place names and maps are closely related. Toponymy in cartography. Toponymy is the study of place names. A careful reading of place names gives us information that goes beyond the simple name of the site. This is El Ponte de Pedra, a bridge. Font del Sauce, a spring. Can Rivera, name of a house. Saint Jean de Villa Drova, historical building. On a map, the names also help us to better understand the cartographic symbols. For example, this symbol refers to a Christian religious building. The toponymy also provides information on the history, customs and other cultural aspects of a place. It is a legacy of the influences that the country has experienced over time. For example, Shanghai is a Chinese name. Makai, Arabic. L'Aquila, an Italian name from the legacy of ancient Latin. Or Hamburg, German. There are other place names used in a specific language for a geographical feature situated outside the area where that language is widely spoken and differing in form from the respective name in the area where the geographic feature is situated. These are called exonyms. Only a small part of the place names are identified on the territory. So the map is the most efficient tool out there for the dissemination and preservation of the typonymic patrimony of a country. But how are the names of places collected and registered? The primary source of documentation is the fieldwork, i.e. direct visits to places. Surveyors carry out field surveys and record the names on maps and lists. Or record the local pronunciations. In addition to the fieldwork, toponymic information is complemented by the library or cartographic documentation that may already exist over the feature. Data from the fieldwork are reviewed by geographers and philologists, specialists on toponymy. It takes to consider the regulatory documents and scientific works that can provide information about the correct spelling of names. The field of toponymy is the basic resource providing the names of features in a given territory. The best support for translating the names and indicating their scope is mapping, both in traditional paper format and digital. Along with the scope of the designation of a name, the collection should include other attributes of the place name picked, such as the geographical concept, which is the real designated element, the phonetics transcribed in the phonetic alphabet, or the sound recorded, and any other data such as the source of the informant, if the name is in use, etc. Today, all kinds of collections of place names around the world are made to supplement the information in areas where there is no such data, but also following the recommendations of the United Nations for the preservation of this intangible heritage, often only transmitted orally. The toponymic information digitized is integrated into the toponymic databases. The appearance, shape and layout of the place names are crucial to making the map more legible and understandable. 
The scale, type and purpose of the map mark the criteria of density and typographical style. The typefaces should be simple and should allow for quick and easy reading. The font size should correspond to the type of map, the scale and dimensions of the feature. The larger the scale, more names can be typed. However, when the scale is small, only significant sites can be represented. The first United Nations Conference on the Standardization of Geographical Names recommended that each names authority produce and continually revise appropriate gazetteers of all its standardized geographical names and that, in addition to the standardized names, each gazetteer should include as a minimum such information as is necessary for the proper location and identification of the named features. Gazetteers list in an alphabetical order the geographical names found within administrative division of a country or within the whole country. For all official names, a gazetteer should include information that identifies the kinds of geographical entities named, their locations and variant names and spellings. Gazetteers are generally compiled and published after a relatively complete collection of names and associated information has been assembled for an area. The National Authority's database of official names should provide the data source. As noted, the group of experts of tomology in the country at present faces, like other languages, globalization. The existence of a national gazetteer acts as the protector of the names and is the legal tool for its preservation. Speaking of globalization, now more than ever, the place names are present in everyday life and are still inseparable from their cartographic support, now digital. GPS systems, combined with the maps, facilitate, through place names, easier location and orientation anywhere in the world. Today, geo-information has become a vital and essential springboard and it is assessed by using place names, but unrelated to territorially referenced names, but those who, through the search engines offered by digital technologies, allowing identification of the actual items and positioning on the territory. In a globalized world, maps promote exchange and communication. A proper toponymy brings benefits in many areas. Business transactions, surveys and statistics, environmental management, emergencies, navigation and positioning, communications. And not only that, the toponymy preserves a significant part of the heritage.